From then on, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. Remember the background. When Pilate brought the Roman standards in, Herod tattled on him, and Pilate got spanked by Caesar. He was reprimanding while treating Caesar like a god because it pissed off the Jews. What in the world would he expect to happen to him for pissing them off even more by releasing a messianic figure who claimed himself to be a god in direct opposition to Caesar? I criticized Pilate for not fulfilling his duties as a leader, but the political reality is that if he did, it would result in his demise. So, when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement, and in Aramaic, Gabbatha. Now, it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold, your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to be crucified. We really have to put ourselves back into the context of that time and culture to see how disgusting that declaration was. When we hear the Christian phrase, Jesus is Lord, they're referencing Romans 10:9. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And our culture may think Jesus is Lord means Jesus is the Lord, Adonai, Theos, but that isn't the word John used. He used Kairos, which means king or master. We think of Rome being overtly hostile to Christianity because it was different from their pagan religion. But that isn't really the case. Rome was a worldwide empire encompassing various different cultures with different gods. Their very own religion, which they didn't actually take all that seriously, assumed a pantheon of gods. So adding one more wasn't really a big deal. Judaism was officially sanctioned and Christians were originally just considered a subset of the Jewish sect. What Rome said then is exactly what the world says today. We believe in freedom of religion. We respect your right to worship how you want, but keep it private in your own homes. And don't let it interfere with the world at large. Don't be bringing your Christianity into the marketplace or politics. But don't try to force your views on others. In other words, Caesar is Lord. No king, but Caesar. Rome didn't care about religion. They cared about politics. To proclaim anyone but Caesar as Lord over your life was treason. Today, when people read, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It simply means that you mentally acknowledge the resurrection. Do some kind of altar call prayer, maybe even put a Jesus is Lord bumper sticker on your car. You're good to go. The fact that Jesus is Lord doesn't have to impact your life in any significant way. When Paul wrote it, however, he was a prisoner potentially facing martyrdom writing to other Christians who anticipated a similar fate. What he was exhorting them was that when the world comes to take away your livelihood, your liberty, your reputation, and even your life, but offers to give it all back if you simply declare Caesar is Lord and toe the party line saying whatever is politically correct, you are to boldly declare that Jesus is Lord without regard for what they will do to you. Your declaration will likely lead to torture and even death. But if you endure all things because you have faith that Christ rose from the dead, 
you too will rise from the dead and reign with him in the kingdom to come. These are pretty profoundly different meanings. They're almost two different religions. The bumper sticker faith is acceptable to the world. What the world will not countenance is you following Christ as though he really is your only Lord and Master. The founders knew the work and were inspired by it. When they marched into battle, one of their slogans was, no king but Jesus. They were contrasting what the Pharisees are chanting here, telling King George, Caesar, the world, Satan, that they are bound to obey no other man. And as freeborn children of God, they are obligated only to their conscience and to follow the Lord who redeemed them from death and granted them eternal life. I started the sermon saying I was going to use it as self-reflection, but thus far, all I've really done is take shots at them over there. Well, here's where I found myself a little guilty this election season. There's really no way for me to be PC and dance around the fact that while the Republican Party is incredibly flawed, the Democrats are just outright in league with Satan. In terms of abortion, sexuality, gender, the family, concepts of race, liberty, concepts of work, the nature of truth, pretty much every issue, they represent the satanic world system opposed to God. They literally had an open Satanist, Lady Gaga, sing the national anthem at the inauguration. That said, our hope is not in the authorities who govern this world. You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given you from above. Was Donald Trump placed in authority as God's instrument to bring about his long-range plan? Yep. How about Joe Biden? Yes to that as well. Whether to bless or to curse. For there is no authority except from God, and those which exist are established by God. The king's heart is like channels of water in the hand of the Lord. He turns it wherever he wishes. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. I'm not saying that I'm giving up fighting against evil, destructive ideologies, or people. No, not at all. First half of John 19.11 reminds us that God is in control. So stop fretting over a world which seems to be spinning out of control. You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given you from above. But he also reminds us that Judas, the Pharisees, and Pilate still have a comeuppance awaiting. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. I will continue to do my part and play my role, confident that God is the author and director of the play. Shouldn't have lost focus. I should have not yelled for my Barabbas and certainly should not have forgotten that I have no king but Jesus. The Pharisees knew better as well. They brought Jesus to be crucified ostensibly for blasphemy, but now they were committing it themselves when they cried out, we have no king but Caesar.